Public Health Systems welcomes you to this broadcast of the high school girls varsity basketball regional finals. We are at the Vandalia Butler Student Activity Center where the Fort Laramie Redskins will take on the Tri-Village Patriots. Tonight's game is being brought to you by the following sponsors. Lope Building Products, First National Bank, Keyhole Pizza, Winner's Meats, Sydney Auglaise Audiology, and NK Telco bringing you tonight's game between Fort Lormy and Tri-Village. The visiting team, the Fort Laramie Redskins, come into tonight's game with a 26-1 record. Number one in the state. Huge win over the Minster Wildcats in the regional semifinals, led by Jaden Putoff with an outstanding 21-point performance, along with a solid effort by Ava Schultes off the bench for the Redskins. Jaden Putoff, JP, definitely stepped it up big time, hitting 18 points three times her season average. And you mentioned Ava Shoulders, also Colleen Brandewey early on. Colleen came in, hit some shots when the offense was struggling. It kept Fort Lormy in the game versus being down by more than 10. Her shots, and then Shoulders had the buzzer in the first half, a big momentum boost for the Redskins. And uh, yeah, they got some great contributions from girls that haven't scored that much, but Jade put off her senior, really stepped up and helped her team beat a very, very good Mr. Wildcat squad. Tri-Village Patriots come in tonight's game with a 23-2 record, a big 53-42 win over Legacy Christian. Tri-Village, a young team, but playing with a quiet confidence as we approach the regional semifinals. Yeah, they are a young team. They, they have great uh, position players, Downing's in the middle, tall, lengthy, great players, shot blocker as well. Segister's a score from outside, and the other girls fill it in their spots, and they move the ball well. They don't play a lot of girls, but the ones that do play get it done. And again, they've got size, quickness, and a, and a great young talent coming up here, and they're going to be on a big test tonight against a good Fort Laramie team. Fort Laramie and Tri-Village doing battle here at the Vandalia Butler Student Activity Center, and now our national anthem on NK Telco Sports. Thank you. Redskins averaging 61.8 points per game, giving up only 24.1 points per game. Are the visitors here tonight? They will be introduced to non roster players and then our starters for tonight's game as a bid to the state tournament is at stake here at the Student Center at Vandalia Butler. Yeah, Fort Lormy, Dave, 10 regional championships under their belt. Nine state tournament appearances last year's obviously got cut short on their way to Columbus. So, but 10 regional championships and uh, two state championships in 15 and also 13. So a good run here under head coach Carlos Siegel. Starting lineups tonight brought to you by Sydney Auglaise Audiology. Just about to introduce the starters for the Fort Laramie Redskins. Huge win over their rivals, Minster, and their previous starter. Previous game. 
And with that high seed, they really had an easy route, if you will, through the sectional three games they played, being the high seed, took care of business through the Sydney sectional, and then the big test again against Minster, found themselves down by 10, and it really looked like Minster was in control, and then the second half, uh, they finally take the lead by one and finish strong in the fourth quarter to take advantage of the nine-point win. Gave yep. Minster their first tournament loss in that four-year run for Ivy Wolf and Janae Horn. Yeah, the big fourth 15 to three run is number 11, a senior, Caitlin Gasson for the Redskins. Number 20, senior, Kareen Heitkamp. Number 22, a senior, Kenzie Holscher. Number 30, a senior, Dana Rose. And number 31, a senior, Jaden Putoff. So it's Gasson, Heitkamp, Holscher, Rose, and Putoff for the Fort Laramie Redskins. Now for the Tri-Village Patriots under head coach Brad Gray, collected his 300th win this season, a very highly successful program as well. He's been there and he took his team to state. Back in 2012, they defeated these Fort Lormie Redskins to get there and these teams have battled this situation before. Fort Lormie prior to that, and I think it was a 10 and 11, knocked Tri-Village out and Lormie then went on to state. Tri-Village, third time at Charm, was able to get it in 2012. We're going to try to do it again this year against a young squad, against a veteran lineup in Fort Lormie. Starting lineup for the Patriots, Riley Sagaster, Delaney Gray, number 10, number 14, Morgan Hunt. Number 20, a junior, Megan Downing, and number 21, a sophomore, Tori Richards. So it's Sagaster, Gray, Hunt, Downing, Richards under head coach Brad Gray. Let's take a look at our keys to the game tonight, brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Well, for the Fort Lormie Redskins, they're going to rely on what got them this far, that strong defense. They get 24 points a game. They want to make sure they make it tough on the Patriots. Team chemistry is important. They also want to play together as a unit, make sure that any breakdowns and determined young ladies. The Redskins want this. They know they got the short end of the stick last year, not getting a chance to prove it. They're going to come back and try to earn another right to get there tonight. And for the Tri-Village Patriots. Value the basketball. Don't give up easy baskets to the Redskins. Make Fort Lone play half-court offense. Don't let them score in transition. Put off. Also keep rebounding battle close. First possession, Fort Lauren put off shot a little bit short. Patriots will have it. Our keys to the game tonight brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Have nothing else day for the Patriots to get a good start with put off who was hot, if you will, in the semifinal game, missing um, a chance to continue that streak she had with the missed shot in the opening tip in transition. Tri-Village will maintain the basketball, tossing it in will be Tori Richards. Number 21, and to Sagaster. She'll handle the basketball. Gasson will guard her for the Redskins. Tri-Village inside the Downing. Back out. It goes to Richards. High camp on her. Downing looks down low. Sagaster looked like she took an extra step, but here come the Redskins on the break. Rose to the hoop, blocked by Downing, but she'll be called for the foul and Megan Downing boy when you take a look at the Tri-Village stats she's very impressive with block shots Jeff 120 block shots on the season that's about five and a half a game and she nearly got her 121st one there but instead picks up an important first foul on her in less than a minute of action here 715 on the first National Bank think first scoreboard Fort Laramie puts the first point on the board as Rose's second free throw also good and the 73 percent shooting Rose from the charity strike has the Redskins in the lead by two Sagaster across the timeline over to Richards Richards will handle it Morgan Hunt number 14 was player of the year in Southwest District She's number 14. 18 and a half points a game for Morgan Hunt. Inside the Downing. Megan Downing puts it up and in. We're tied at two. 11 point score, 10 rebounds a game. And I mentioned earlier, just a little bit ago, five and a half block shots a game. For Lormy, looking at his own defense. They get it inside and Holscher will feel speed rows. And a Nice reverse layup as the 
Nice move on the baseline, and it's four to two for Loramie. Beautiful job by Danny Rhodes with the reverse layup. Didn't give Downing time to block the shot on this side of the rim. Went around and came up and under for a nice score. Ball goes to the floor, and Jaden Putoff creates the jump ball in a possession will favor the Redskins, so that results in a turnover for Tri-Village. Second turnover against the Patriots. Fort Lormie's yet to turn the ball over. We played nearly just two minutes here in this regional finals championship game. Tri-Village only averaging 13 turnovers on the season. Redskins they work in the basketball. They on defense to the Redskins. I believe you said 23 turnovers a game is what Fort Lormie averages. So they force teams into a lot of turnovers. Put off, open, in and out. Rebound comes to Sagaster. Up court she comes. Quickly they get it to Gray, double team. Gasson will have the basketball and it's gonna be a jump ball. And this time the possession arrow will go Tri-Village way. Gasson has been active so far. Even in the first possession, she poked the ball away a couple times. This time she causes the jump ball situation. Possession arrow favors Dry Village. They avoid the turnover. Inbounds pass to Riley Sagaster. She's at the top of the key. Back over to the left side and Gray. Inside it goes to Downing. Working on Rose. Off balance shot no good and Rose will have it. Up court Gasson. Inside it goes to Heitkamp. Shot no good. Rebound by Holscher up and in. Kenzie Holscher with the basket. Fort Lormie jumps out to a 6-2 lead. Good job offensive rebound by Holscher. Second chance points for the Redskins. Sagasser tries to take it to the hoop. That'll be a foul. I mentioned Gasson was active to start the game. That time just a little too tight. Officials didn't like the contact. She picks up her first foul. Tri-Village tries to get it inbounds. It's going to be a jump ball. Colleen Brandewee, fresh into the game, creates that held ball situation. I mentioned her name in the pregame, Dave. She hit some big shots in the Minster game that, again, didn't put him in the lead, but it kept the deficit less at that time when Fort Lormie was having trouble scoring on offense. Good job by Colleen Brandewee. Yeah, so true. And Minster had that double-digit lead, and here's the shot from the corner. It's good. And Colleen Brandewee on cue. Comes up with another big bucket. Our score, Fort Laramie eight, Tri-Village two. The Patriots take the timeout. And a good start for the Fort Laramie Redskins. Well, their defense has been smothering. As you mentioned, our keys of the game, they've been very aggressive. They've held Tri-Village to just two shots so far. Both of them by Downing. Downing was able to get her first one, and everything's been tough for the Patriots trying to run her whole offense. Eight to two, our score, Fort Laramie with the lead. And a big three there by Colleen Brandewey forces the timeout. Brandewey comes into tonight's game averaging five and a half points per game. It was a two-pointer Brandewey oh, two hit, point. I believe, but uh, nonetheless, a big shot. Again, just in off the game, force a turnover at the other end and gets rewarded on this end with a basket. Fast break and Richards will score and it's eight to four. That's what good passing does against the press. You can throw the ball faster than you can run. Tri-Village, excellent job moving the ball down the court. A good time out there and a good response for 21 Richards. Outside shot, no good by Heitkamp. Foul inside. <laughs> Gonna go against Riley Sagaster. Well, Sagister and Downing, each with a personal foul. Again, Tri-Village, not a very deep bench. You hate to have any of your starters, if you will, get into foul trouble. Rose makes the free throw, and Putoff will come back in as Holscher will catch a breather at the 4.15 mark. Dana Rose, you mentioned earlier when she made her first two foul shots, 73% on the season. Four for four tonight. Now the Redskins will apply some pressure. They get it into Downing. Back to Sagaster who will bring it up court against Colleen Brandewee. 
Sagaster to the right side, looks inside for Downing. She'll make a move to the hoop. to draw the foul. And that should go against Corrine Heitkamp. It does. It goes on number 20, Corrine Heitkamp. Her first foul, team second. Megan Downing, a junior, six foot two at the free throw line. She'll connect. 65% foul shooter on the season for Megan Downing. As a team, Tri Village, a very good free throw shooting team at 75% as a team. Holstrow will rotate back into the lineup as Dana Rose will catch a breather. Second free throw also good. Fort Laramie 10, Tri Village 6. Good possession for Tri Village. They needed to score after Fort Laramie had opened up a six point lead here just under halfway in the second or the first quarter. In the corner, pass comes back over to Brandoy. She goes inside. Holscher will have it. Back out to Putoff for the 15 footer. Jaden Putoff, first basket of the night. Missed her first two attempts, but uh, found the answer on that attempt. First bucket, again, a great semifinal performance. Key effort in that Minster victory the Redskins had here on Thursday. Downing inside to Hunt. Morgan Hunt, the sophomore, scores. Her first basket of the night. Nice pass, good assist from Downing. Good cut without the basketball for Hunt. From the corner, Corrine Heitkamp. The 35th made triple on the season. Shoots it at 35%. Seven point Redskin lead. 15 to eight. Lead at seven points. Tri Village will come out with the basketball. Richards. Back over to Delaney Gray. They're out front. Gasson will come up on Gray. They find Downing inside. Makes a move inside off balance, but. Downing shot will come home. Good footwork by Downing Wright. She got bumped and didn't get the call, but able to maintain balance and kiss it off the glass. Six quick points for Downing. Put off with the basketball. Back out front, Gasson. 2.20 to go on the first National Bank Think First scoreboard. Brandewee back over to Holscher. Hyde Camp will have it. Looks to the bench, back over to Gasson on the left side. Gasson tries to move inside, back out to Holscher. It's gonna be a turnover for the Redskins. Their first turnover of the game, Dave, with just under two minutes to play, so they've been uh, taking good care of the basketball here, not making any turnovers. This one a dead ball one, so no time for the Patriots to get a score in transition. Riley Sagaster with the basketball to Hunt. Hunt will handle the basketball. The illegal screen away from the basketball. Somebody trying to set a double screen. Put off a limb bound it. The student section here, Fort Laramie's. It's out and you can't do that. Well, and that can't do that was on Tory Richards, 5'7 sophomore. Her first foul, team's third. Rose, top of the key. She goes to the right side, goes inside now against Downing, up and in. Nice, strong move by Rose, and the lead goes to seven points for Fort Loramie. Rose went at Downing. Downing, remember, already has one foul. She has to be careful how much she challenges, and there was contact. Fortunately for Downing, she didn't call, get called for her foul, but eight quick points for Rose. Good footwork by Rose on this end. There's the steal by Holscher. She'll pull up with the basketball. Double team, but dumps it off to Rose. Up court quickly. Rose has it. Three-pointer. It's there. Maureen Highcamp. That was Brandoe. Oh, Colleen Brandoe. Brandoe, excuse yes. me, number 10. Her 18th made shot from three-point land this season. Five points off the bench for Brandoe. Delaney Gray for three. Shot no good. Rebound comes down to put off. Holscher. Redskins running a little bit. Over to the right side. One more time. That's high camp. That one's high camp. They're in high camp. Two triples here in the quarter. 13-point Redskin lead. 
Boy, when Fort Laramie starts hitting the threes, that's just another dimension to their game. They create another turnover. That's the sixth of the quarter against Tri-Village. Corrine Heitkamp will walk it up the court. We're under 10 seconds. 13 point Fort Laramie lead. Put off over in the right side. It goes inside to Rose off the glass and she'll draw a foul. And that'll be the second on Megan Downing for Tri-Village. Good strong move by Dana Rose. Maybe knowing that Downing had to foul went right at her, forced the call, which is the second against Downing. Maddie Bennett off the Tri-Village bench and she'll come in a moment for Downing. As Schultes and Gephardt will come into the lineup for Fort Laramie. Here with 2.9 seconds left. Talked about earlier, Schultes came in that Minster game. First real live action, so to speak, from the ACL injury. Not only contributed, but really <laughs> provided some much needed points for the Redskins. Buzzer sounds, first quarter is over. Outstanding quarter for Fort Laramie, our store. Fort Laramie 24, Tri-Village 10. We'll be back right after this. Kemmler Orthopedic Center is focused on a personalized caring approach to treat all aspects of orthopedics, including total joint replacement, shoulder reconstruction, stem cell injections, and more. Dr. James Kemmler and Jed Cooney, certified PA, are dedicated to providing the best orthopedic care in the Grand Lake region. Kemmler Orthopedic Center has offices located in Salina and Van Wert, along with extended evening hours. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-586-5760. Clopay Building Products, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road CDLA driving positions. Clopay is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clopay offers a great benefits package, is an equal opportunity employer, and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopaydoor.com slash careers. Eight minutes to go here in the first half. We'll start the second quarter. What a performance by Fort Laramie. Some great shooting by the Redskins. Well, they were torched the net. Eight for 12 in the first quarter. Of that, three of five from beyond the arc, and one of the shots they were actually able to get their own rebound and put back up and in. So they had very efficient offensive possessions for the Redskins, and their defense has forced a number of turnovers. That is now the seventh. The six first quarter turnovers against Tri Village, now that one the seventh. Just a lot of pressure on Tri Village by the Redskins defense. Redskins offense clicking high gear, 24 points in the first quarter. Nine from Dana Rose. Rose going to lose the basketball out of bounds as Holscher will come back in. Ava Schultes, as we noted in the lineup, number 21, as is number 32, Clara Gephardt. Redskins using that depth, and that's one thing that Tri-Village might be a little bit short on. Inside, Hunt, back over to Gray. Gray looks inside, Bennett in the lineup. They try to get it inside, but it's taken away by Gephardt. Good anticipation by number 32, Clear Gephardt. Read the pass and did a nice job intercepting it. Holscher takes the 15-footer. Rose will try and put the rebound up, but she'll draw the foul. Dana Rose one more time. Jeff will step to the free throw line. And she's had a lot of activity at the foul line. Three trips to the line, five of six so far. Make that now six of seven. Already into double figures, 10 points. And the lead now goes to 16 points. Fort Lormy, an excellent shooting team as well. 72% I mentioned earlier. Tri-Village, 75%, but Fort Lormy, a very good 72%. Both these teams shoot the three ball very nicely as well. Each team connecting on 36% of their three-point shots on the season. Molly Scantland in the lineup for Tri-Village, number 15. Scantland looks inside to Bennett, up and in, and Maddie Bennett gets a bucket. Well, that time, every Redskin was on this side of the floor. Shoulders had no help backside for the lob, and 
Good job by 34, Bennett. Here comes Tri-Village after the missed shot by Fort Laramie. 14 point lead for the Redskins. Hunt with the basketball. She'll get it back out to Sagaster. Defended there by Gasson. Redskins in a tight man to man defense. Sagaster picked up there by Rose. They'll get it back out front to Bennett as the turnover as they try to go inside. Pass under throw and Fort Laramie did a nice job. Had help on the backside that time. Didn't need it as a, the pass to the interior. Short and able to be knocked away. Another Tri-Village turnover, the ninth of the game. Schultes with the basketball, number 21 out front. Over to Gasson. Gasson trying to work it inside. Holscher with the basketball now. Put off, rotates back out, has the basketball, looks for Gasson. Rose rotates away from the basketball. Gasson goes to the left and Holscher. Out front, Schultes, inside pass. Put off, we'll get it back to Rose. 5.17 to go. Rose brings it back out front. She'll handle the basketball. Hunt on her. There's a whistle. That's going to go against Morgan Hunt. Her first foul, team's fifth. I'm sorry, sixth. Long possession there for the Redskins. Really all their offense in that possession outside the perimeter for the most part. Good job by the Tri-Village Patriots. And kind of a touch foul, if you will, but the referee didn't like the contact that Hunt put on the Redskins and gets whistled for the foul. Bring it back out. Kareen Heitkamp. Over to the right side and Rose. Gasson cuts inside. Put off. Left wing handling the basketball. Rose from the corner. There it is. Number 20, Kareen Heitkamp. Got six points. Couple of threes here tonight, and the lead now at 17 points. Another good look by High Camp, and there's a wild shot by Hunt, but a good pressure by the Redskins and force a tough shot. Rose with the basketball. That time it's a little bit strong. They'll work it back out to Rose. Rose down the lane, easy bucket, and will score. Point. Timeout once again, Tri Village. Patriots just trying to stop an offense. It's on fire. Our score, Fort Laramie 31, Tri-Village 12. We'll be back right after this. At First National Bank, we are working hard to make your life a little easier. With products like Card Valet, an app allowing you to control your cards with real-time notifications, transaction restrictions, and spending limits. The ability to access your money through 55,000 all-point ATMs across the country, surcharge free. Live customer support when you need it. And online and mobile banking, allowing you to gain access to your financial information wherever and whenever you like. First National Bank, making your life a little easier. Regional finals action, Division Four girls basketball here on NK Telco Sports in Fort Laramie putting on quite a show here in the first half, up 31 to 12. And I'll tell you, Tri Village has a tough task on their hand here. They do. They now the last possession they held Fort Laramie for a long time before they actually got a shot off. Their defense was good, but Fort Laramie able to secure the offensive rebound and then get a layup by Dana Rose. So. A tough battle, a lot of weapons. Uh, High Camp has hit a three-pointer as well this quarter. So again, you guard them inside, they hit from the outside. You go out, they drive around and score around the rim. So yeah, tough task. Don't have an answer for them right now as Gasson gets her foul. Second called against her in the game. Tri-Village puts Megan Downing back into the lineup. 6'2 junior. In fact, I believe they've, yeah, they've got their starting lineup back in the play as Richards will toss it in. Now three sophomores and two juniors for Tri-Village. Fort Laramie starting five seniors tonight. So there again, shows you some of the veteran leadership, if you will, or experience that Fort Laramie has. And Tri-Village right now, the younger bunch, trouble here handling the Fort Laramie attack. Another deflected or hands on a basketball by the Redskins defense. Ball goes to the floor. Ball's gonna be kicked, I believe. 
So Tri Village will maintain possession. 3.47 to go here in the first half of play. Richards will toss it in. Riley Sagister back over to Richards. Richards working with the basketball on Colleen Brandewee. Back over to Hunt. It's going to go off the hands of Downing. And it's going to be a jump ball as Rose comes in and grabs a loose basketball. So the possession arrow will favor Fort Lormie. Tenth turnover now against the Patriots. Again, just the black jerseys all over the white jerseys. Not a lot of room to pass and catch. So again, an empty opportunity there for the Patriots on offense. And Fort Lormie has outscored them here in the second quarter. Seven points to two to add on to that good first quarter. They led by 14. Fort Lormie almost turns it over. Put off has it. Rose will go to the baseline on Downing. Back out in from the wing. Shot long there. Inside rebound. Rose It doesn't fall for her. And Downing clears the boards for Tri-Village. Sagister double teamed in the corner. Ball is going to be kicked, and that's going to be Fort Laramie basketball. So good defense by. They get trapped in the corner, Jeff, and it's next to impossible. Yeah, and I actually thought the bounce pass hit Downing's foot. But, but did. Uh, Downing kicked it. But this should be Fort Laramie <laughs> basketball. But uh, yeah, they were in a bad situation in the corner. Holsher's over there. She's tall, lengthy, and double team. It was a bad situation. Lucky There's to get the ball back. Feed to Hunt. She'll draw the foul. Downing, who had six assists in the Tri Village win over Legacy Christian, almost had an, had one there. But Hunt will go to the line. Well, she does a nice job passing. Goes Downing. She's tall. She can see the court, and she's made some nice passes tonight. And. Um, yeah, that's another aspect of her game. Again, she scores well, she rebounds well, she blocks shots, so the assists are just another added feature for number 20, Megan Downing at six feet, two inches. Maddie Bennett will come in for Delaney Gray, so Tri-Village kind of go, going with a taller lineup, so to speak, as Holscher grabs that rebound. Doing a nice job breaking or bringing the ball down against some pressure for Holscher, six foot senior, able to handle the ball again. She's also a creative player. Nice pass inside put off shot will be blocked by Downing. It will roll come back to Riley Sagaster. There's going to be a foul. And that's going to go against Jaden put off. Seems like a lot of times when a player misses a shot, they if there's a quick foul after that, it's the player that missed the shot. That time put off maybe a little distraught that she had her shot blocked and hung around and hung around too closely. She picks up her first foul. She does check out. But another block shot for Downing. Again, 100, 120 block shots for Megan Downing on the season. Hunt with the basketball looking for Downing inside. Back over to Bennett. They'll get it back to Hunt down the lane. Puts it up no good and she'll draw the foul and Morgan Hunt will go to the line. A nice athletic move. Morgan Hunt, she makes things happen, able to go and attack not only the basket, but kind of draw contact into the Redskins defense and pick up the second foul against Kenzie Holscher. Clara Gephardt will come into the game here in a moment as Hunt makes the free throw. Hunt, 80% free throw shooter on the season. You mentioned Dave, she's the player of the year in the CCC conference or the cross county conference. 18 and a half points and a very good 80%. She's three of four tonight. Outstanding player comes in, lead them with 18.5 points as they try to apply a little bit of a pressure. Corrine Heitkamp, shot will go and that makes it 33 15. Heitkamp with eight points. There's the steal. Corrine Heitkamp over to Rose. Rose. There's going to be a double yeah, stop and go. Just held it too long. In the old days, we called it a carry. Really, it's a double dribble because she stopped the dribble and then started it again. Just Fort Lormie's third mistake of the night in turnovers. Pretty clean. Few mistakes. Great shooting. Outstanding defense inside to Downing. Dumps it off to Bennett. Back to Downing. 15-footer. Corrine Heitkamp will be guilty of the foul. And it's Colleen Brandewee, I think. Oh, that was 10. Colleen Brandewee. Yeah, she came from the, the weak side or the right side of Downing. 
and drew contacts. A free throw is coming up for Downing. She's two for two on the night. And she'll connect. Three for three on the evening for the 6'2 juniors. You see the replay there and the contact coming from Brandaway. And our replays tonight brought to you by Winners Quality Meats. Rose with the rebound on the missed shot. Tri Village has missed a couple free throws here in the second quarter. Again, they shoot as a team 75%. They have a chance here on the Fort Blumey turnover, but yeah, maybe they're going to keep, maybe they're not going to get the ball back. Dave is going to, nope, they're going to keep it with Tri Village. Brandewey's pass goes astray, and Tri Village will have the basketball. 125 to go here in the first half on the first National Bank Think First scoreboard. Sagerson over to Hunt. Hunt trying to go inside, dumps it off to Bennett. Bennett's trapped. Back out to Hunt for a 15 footer, no good. Rebound comes down to Schultes. Rose will have it up court quickly. Short jump shot, no good. Rebound comes down to put off. Shot taken there by Maureen Heitkamp. And with one minute to go, Tri Village will have the basketball. Good backside rebound. Not real sure what happened there. I thought Schultz had the rebound. Did she kick it out or just lose it off of her leg? But it whistle belongs in favor of Tri Village. They'll take it under a minute to go. They need some points here at the end of the half, Dave, to cut into the 17 point lead and maybe build a little energy into halftime and into the third quarter. Sagerson inside, but Rose will clear it. Fast break up to Colleen Brandewey. Shot doesn't go. Schultes has her hands on it. Now we've got a scramble. And it's going to be a travel on Fort Loramie. So a rebound and a turnover, I guess, in, in succession there. Tough break. Hard to see if anybody really had possession, but. I thought they pointed, OK, travel on Tri Village. Travel on Tri Village. All right. Okay. Thought he pointed this way, but uh, we'll keep it with the Redskins. Shoulders with the basketball. Back over to Colleen Brandewey. Put off in the corner. Back out front to Rose. Fort Laramie. 24 seconds left. Put off cuts inside. Back over to the right side. Height camp. Rose rotates out to the top. Put off in the wing. High camp. Put off has the basketball. Clock at seven and counting. Rose. She'll have to make the move down the lane. Off balance shot. No good. And I think we've got a whistle. whistle. I think Brand uh, Rose was fouled. So that means Rose will go to the line one more time as the officials will talk about it. There was probably going to be a little bit of time left. I thought I heard a whistle. The referee was standing here on the sideline, but they'll say time expired to give Dana Rose more free throws. So Dana Rose will step to the line with no time left here in the first half of play as they discuss whether they're going to reset the clock possibly. What do you I think, I think Jeff? there's time. I think they're going to put like 1.3 like on. I would agree. Foul came before well, the buzzer. Dana Rose is going to have shots 9 and 10 from the foul line. So all the fouls, when she's been fouled, she's been uh, going to the basket. They'll, they'll give her the free throws. They'll say time expired. So Rose will take her couple of free throws here with a 33-16 Fort Laramie lead. Rose will connect. 14 points for the senior. Second free throw is good. And our halftime score from the Vandalia Butler Student Activity Center. Regional Finals, Fort Laramie 35, Tri-Village 16. We'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. All Glaze and Sydney Audiology are committed to providing the most advanced and affordable hearing care solutions. 
Did you know that more and more insurances are offering coverage for hearing needs and that we are the most comprehensive provider in the area? Because we want to serve all in our community, we partner with agencies such as Medicaid, OOD, Sertoma, and most recently the VA, helping our veterans find local solutions to their problems. Don't leave unused benefits on the table this year. Call us today to see if you qualify. Hello, New Bremen. I'm Matt Everidge with NK Telco, and we're here for you for your cable, telephone, and internet services. Hey, Minster. This is Nate Henry with NK Telco, and we're here for you for your existing cable TV, internet, and phone service. Hey, New Knoxville. I am Wesley Meyer at NK Telco. We are here for you and your customer service needs. Hey, Maria Stein. I'm Ken with NK Telco, and we are here for you with hometown pride. Army enjoying a 35-16 lead here in the regional finals. Take a look at the hardware for tonight that you'll see. Of course, the winner gets the big prize. They get to move on. That's as important as the hardware, but Fort Laramie can add it to their collection if things hold true here in the second half. But you know, it's tournament time. You just never, never know. And we've seen a lot of those <laughs> never, never knows, Dave. You and I have witnessed some strange finishes, but uh, nonetheless, if Tri Village is going to make a comeback, we'll have to start here early in the third quarter. We'll take a look at our halftime stats. That looks good. Okay. Big 19 goal. point lead here for, for the Redskins. Yeah, that's probably the most important one. Field goal shooting. Tri Village, only 10 shots, Dave. So 50%, but you got to look at the details. Only 10 shots, five makes. Fort Lormie, 23 attempts, 11 makes. Fort Lormie hit on four of seven, included in their 23 shots. Those four of seven from beyond the arc. Tri Village only attempted one three point shot. They missed it. Free throw is another advantage for the Redskins. Nine of 10. All of those coming from Dana Rose. Tri Village six of eight from the line. Rebounding margin. Redskins with 14. Tri Village with just five. Fort Lormie's got four points on offensive rebounds to go along with their caroms. And turnover is another key difference here in the first 16 minutes of action. Tri Village with 12, six in each quarter. Fort Lormie just four turnovers, and that's again added to their offensive efficiency. They've been very good on offense. Second quarter, Dave, it slowed down a bit, but they still won the quarter 11 to 6 and got it done. And again, we'll, we'll look to get a good start here for the Fort Lormie defense. Don't let Tri Village get any opportunity to get some momentum and climb back into this. Boy, when you look at those stats, a couple things jump out at you. Only 10 shots for Tri Village, number one. Second one is the turnovers for Tri Village. 12 turnovers in the first half, the only average normally in a game, 13. And Fort Laramie just playing efficiently on both ends of the court. Tri Village were open. They were led in score by Megan Downing with seven points in the first half. And the shot was blocked out of bounds by Fort Laramie. I think maybe Dana Rose got it. They tried to go inside that time as Sagaster tried to slip inside against the Redskins defense, but he'll come back out to Hunt. If it was Rose, that's her 34th block on a season, but it stays with Tri Village. Downing with seven points, Morgan Hunt with five, two apiece from Tory Richards and Maddie Bennett for their total of 16 points in the first half. Sagaster trying to go inside, pulls up. Shot not there, and they'll run their offense. It was there, but Dana Rose closed down, Dave, on her hard and really shut that distance that she needed to get her shot off and couldn't pull the trigger. Richards back off to Sagaster inside the Downing. Downing tries to pass it over to Hunt. They'll get it back out to Gray. It'll go back inside to Downing. Back out to Gray. Hunt from the corner. Shot no good. Gasson has her hands on it, but I think it's going to go off of Downing for Tri-Village. First half scoring for Fort Laramie. Dana Rose leads all scores with 15. Corinne Heitkamp with 11. Five from Colleen Brandewi. And two apiece from Kenzie Holscher and Jaden Putoff. Travel on Dana Rose. And we understand Dana did not block the shot in the last possession, just simply the, the shot went out of bounds. So no block shot for Dana Rose. They'll inbound it to Sagaster. She has it out front. Marine Heitkamp on her. They'll get it over to Hunt. 
Gray has it. The junior looks inside. Sagaster on the cut. There's the steal. Ball's on the floor. Holscher has it. Rose now up to Holscher. Here come the Redskins. Holscher down the lane. Nice move. And a foul's going to be on Hunt. Well, Holscher maybe got the deflection and caused a steal on the defensive end. And it hustles down the floor, gets it, and muscles right at number 14, Hunt, who picks up her third foul. But went out on the left side of the basket, Dave, and able to kind of muscle her way in and draw contact and a foul. Take a look at that one one more time, brought to you by the steal, and then winner's quality meets. As you can see the replay, Hunt with a basketball as she'll come up court after the missed free throw. Ball is going to be another foul, and we'll sort through that and see who the call is on. 11. Gaston picks up her third foul. And quickly off the bench comes Colleen Brandewey, number 10. She'll come into the lineup as Gasson will go out, her third foul. Sagasser to toss it in. Downing will take it. Looks inside to Hunt. She'll get it back out to Gray. It's going to be tipped away there. Another nice pass from Megan Downing, a bullet to Hunt, she just couldn't finish. I thought maybe she's gonna come up on the other side with the reverse layup, but to her pass to the corner, deflected, it'll stay with Tri-Village. Tri-Village will inbound it. Riley Sagaster tries to get an inbound, taken away there by Putoff. Up court quickly. Nice bounce. Inside the Putoff shot, no, that'll be a foul. Traveling. It'll be a travel. That steal there was, I believe, by Colleen Brandewey. And up court comes Morgan Hunt. She'll bring it to the right side. She'll take it to the baseline, puts it up off the glass, no good. Rebound. Gephardt, number 32, have her hands on it. With Downing, that's going to be a jump ball. The possession arrow favors Fort Laramie. Boy, nice move by Hunt going to the basket. And they maybe just rushed the shot a little bit, thought maybe there was going to be a little bit more contact. And probably she makes a high percentage of those shots in the regular season. But tonight, things not going that well against a very aggressive defense by the Redskins. Put off shot, no good. Rebound, Gephardt back out to Rose. They'll pull it out, get into their offense. In the corner to Gephardt. Got a 30 second timeout taken by Fort Lormy. Take this opportunity to remind you that NK Telco Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays of high school basketball on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD on Channel 503, Saturday, March the 13th at 2 p.m. and Sunday, March the 14th at 2 p.m. as well. You'll watch more games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and at nktelco.com backslash sports. 5.43 to go in the third quarter. Fort Laramie takes the timeout with the 20-point lead. Well, neither team has really been dominant here in the third quarter. The only points belong to Fort Lormie, a free, yeah, let me check here, Dave, it was 35 to 16 at half. So limited score, I'm trying to think here, who hit the free throw for Fort Lormie or what am I missing here? There it is, 36, I swear it just said 35, it's 36, 16. Well, offensively, the Redskins only 11 points in the second quarter. It's tough to match what they did in the first quarter. But an opportunity here for more free throws, maybe, nope, it's on the floor. Rose tried to hit the shot a little bit off balance, but the foul will go against number 21, Tory Richards for Tribe Village. Inbounds pass. High Camp gets it in to put off. Out front is Rose. Over to Colleen Brandewey. Back out front to High Camp. Almost loses the basketball. She'll go inside in the corner to Rose. She'll take the shot in and out. Rebound on the backside. Up and in. Colleen Brandewey. Seven points for Colleen, or at least that's what the scoreboard. I've got her down shows. for seven. I think Kenzie Holster, if I'm mistaken, had a free throw in this quarter where she drew the foul against uh, the Tri-Village Patriots. 
Sagister with a three point shot. Haven't seen much of that tonight. Inside the lane goes Gephardt up and in. A yeah, nice move for Gephardt. Nice kind of running layup. Kissed off the glass. Her first two points of the game for the senior. Gephardt, great move inside as Sagister tries to take it inside. Ball's going to go out of bounds off of Rose and a host of substitutes. Yeah, Sagister not able to score yet tonight. That shot deflected out of bounds. Everything has definitely been difficult for Tri Village on their offensive end. Just no continuity, no rhythm. Nothing has been easy. Number 12. Nice move Riley, there. Riley Heitkamp will come into the game for Fort Loramie. Hunt Morgan Hunt. Nice, yeah, she had a nice move, Dave. Went, she's right-handed, went to the left and had a nice pivot and able to draw the foul. Couldn't get the, the basket to drop, but uh, we'll have two free throws where she's three of four today. Hunt's free throw, rims in and out. 40 to 16, the big lead for the Redskins. And Tri-Village is averaging 67.6 points per game coming into tonight's contest. Well, short of that effort, Colleen Brandewee back over to Kenzie Holscher. Heitkamp gets it back over to Brandewee. Shot no good, rebound. Comes down to Morgan Hunt. She's going to try and take it up court. Cut off there, but the shot will go. And it's going to be a charge on Hunt. Riley Heitkamp hustling back. She draws the charge. Tough break as boy. Tri Village then scores the ball. Instead of, instead of seeing the basket, you see the Charger. Good job by Riley Heitkamp. Creating the turnover against Tri Village and a missed opportunity there by Hunt. That brings the student body to our right, Jeff, back into this game, that's for sure. They've really been in the game a lot of the time. They've been very loud behind us tonight and a good following of the Redskins and students. Over to High Camp. She'll draw the foul. That time I believe it was 20 on 20. Megan Dowling picks up her third foul, fouling number 20, Corinne High Camp. 4-0-1 left to go here in the quarter. 82% free throw shooter is Corinne High Camp on the season. She'll connect. She's had another nice spark, 11 points in the first half. She averages just over six a game, so she was another one of those players that shined for Coach Siegel in the first 16 minutes, especially on offense with the 11 points, and that free throw now gives her 12. Sagister out front. I camp on her, Sagister into the lane. It's gonna be a foul, and that'll stop play. Riley Heitkamp picks up her first foul. Rose will return to the Fort Laramie lineup as Gephardt goes out. Claire had a nice bucket in the third quarter in the post move as she sits down to break. Rose comes up with it. Here come the Redskins up court quickly. They'll get it to Colleen Brandewee. Inside the pass goes to Holscher. Shot no good. There's the steal. Heitkamp back out. Three. Two point shot there by Colleen Brandewey. Boy, they're just getting good shooting on the outside. Yeah, it's been a blessing. Colleen Brandewey, nine points a game. She averages just over five and a half, so she's been, again, above her average in points. Yeah, and it's nice when you have girls that can knock down shots, definitely, and makes defense a lot more fun to play. Sagaster. He's cut off, and there's the steal. Brandewee with the deflection and comes up with the steal as well. Rose. High camp. Back over to Rose. High camp has it. Goes inside to Holscher. Back out to Rose for the three. Count it. Dana Rose. And it's 46 17. Tri Village will take the timeout. Our score, Fort Laramie 46. Tri Village 17 will return right after this. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo 
drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. Thank you to the following sponsors. Cargill, Victory Machine, Hometown Opportunity, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Wagner's IGA, Hulesman Automotive. Right, take a look at take a look at the four Lorme student section here in Mass. Well now they're playing like statues <laughs> about yeah. 10, 15 seconds ago they were doing something behind us. It was loud and they were involved and maybe wore out when we put the camera on, on them, a little camera shy, but uh, they've been very active tonight and it's nice having fans in the stands and especially, you know, we've empty, we've broadcasted to some empty gymnasiums throughout the season. It's good to hear the, the kids yelling and cheering their teammates on here at the Vandalia Butler Student Activity Center. Big night for Fort Lorem as they try to advance to the state tournament. There's a shot from Delaney Gray. Her first basket, I believe, of the night. Rose will handle the basketball for Fort Loramie. Back over to Heitkamp for three. Shot no good. Rebound, Colleen Brandewey. Colleen fouls it up when the junior scores. Another point off offensive rebounds for the Redskins. Colleen Brandewey has done a super job coming off the bench again tonight. Another spark plug offensively, but not only offensively, but playing great defense on the other end of the court. Whistle stops the action. Riley Heitkamp for the Redskins. I don't think I was on to this, her third foul on Riley Heitkamp. She did take a charge earlier in the quarter. Heitkamp will come out. And JP, Jaden put off back in for Coach Siegel's squad. Ali Scantlin will inbound it for Tri Village. Sagaster with the basketball to get it to Downing. Downing puts it on the floor, dumps it off. The teammate Maddie Bennett will pick up her second basket of the night. Good bucket by Maddie Bennett, and I think you mentioned the beautiful pass again by Downing. Tri Village in the zone defense just trying to slow this Fort Lormy offense down. All sorts of firepower. Put off inside the arc, shot no good. Rebound comes down to Holscher, gets it back out. Rose will corral it in, and Rose will get the basketball. Fort Lormy just a lot more energy right now, chasing down the loose balls, and that time getting a the missed shot rebound as well. Just a lot of energy. And again, Tri Village, a limited bench. They don't play many players, and that, you know, and, and then again, the harassing defense by the Redskins has made it very difficult on the Patriots. Carsey Sproul, number 32, will come into the game for Tri Village. Downing picks up her fourth foul. That's why she sits down. Sproul's the only senior on this Tri Village tournament roster. From the corner, there it is, Corrine Heitkamp. I've got her down now for 15 points. Down the lane goes Sagaster, no good. Rose with a rebound. Rose contested the shot. Rose came down with the rebound. Pass to Holscher. Over to Rose, back out to put off. Rose, top of the arc. High camp, they'll just work the basketball. Put off has it. They'll work it around the perimeter with 23 seconds to go. High camp shot, no good. Rebound to Rose, 15 seconds remain. Put off. Colleen Brandewey, shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Rose. Rose tries to get it to the corner. And it's going to go out of bounds as it was intended for Colleen Brandewey. Well, multiple looks there for the Redskins. One of the few times they have not taken advantage of those multiple looks off offensive rebounds. They're going to get a steal there. Holscher, shot doesn't go. Rebound. 
on the back side there by Colleen Brandewey, and she'll go to the free throw line. Colleen Brandewey putting together quite a night for the she Redskins. She has. I mentioned earlier she has five points at halftime, has six here in the quarter, and has done a lot of good things, rebounding, playing defense. This is the free throw there, but uh, has done a fine job, again, coming off the bench and had a good semifinal game as well, again, to help them stay in contention early on and until the other, let's say, Jaden put off show began and helped the Redskins defeat the Wildcats. Made free throw, makes it a 31-point lead as we end the third quarter of action. Fort Laramie 52, Tri-Village 21. We'll return to the final eight minutes right after this. Grand Lake Foot and Ankle Center offers a family-friendly environment with a personalized approach to reduce pain, restore function, and improve mobility. Dr. Christopher Stuckey specializes in reconstructive foot and ankle surgery, diabetic foot care, trauma, including fractures and sports injuries, along with bunions, hammer toes, and ingrown toenails. Grand Lake Foot and Ankle Center has offices located in St. Mary's and Salina. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-394-8664. Clope Building Products. America's favorite garage door is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road CDLA driving positions. Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package, is an equal opportunity employer, and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopedoor.com slash careers. Tri Village will have the basketball. Opening the fourth quarter play here on NK Telco Sports. Glad you're along. Fort Laramie looking to wrap up a visit to the Sturt State Tournament at the University of Dayton Arena as the Redskins with a 31 point lead. Holscher up court quickly. Tries to go inside against Downing. Nice left handed shot, no good. Downing will come down with a rebound. Kenzie Holscher, nice drive to the basket. As you talk about the next step for the Redskins, probably is going to be at Dayton in the state semifinals. Kenzie's dad, Allen, finished up his career at Fort Laramie with a state championship on the boys' side for Fort Laramie back in 1987 with a state championship at Dayton that year. So a chance for father-daughter to share in the same experience with a state championship. But uh, some work to do to get to that point, but keep that in the back of your mind. Brings good University of Dayton Arena. Definitely good memories for the Fort Laramie Redskins. As Sagaster off target on the free throw. Riley averaging 17.7 points per game. Has zero tonight. 86% free throw shooter on the season. Misses both. I think she may be a little bit rattled. Well, it's when things don't go well, they go bad. and. Right now, the Patriots can't get anything really done. We'll call a jump ball here. They'll we'll stay with Fort Laramie, but you know, the 50-50 balls right now, Fort Laramie's winning those by coming up with those, and just Tri-Village has been a difficult task for them here offensively and even trying to slow down the Redskins with her good shooting. But boy, Tri-Village, you look at the roster next year. <laughs> yeah, they, they bring back a lot. As there's a personal foul against Kenzie Holscher, her third and no legal screen. And Dave, we've seen a lot of basketball here at Vandalia Butler, four games. This is our fourth game we've witnessed, and we've seen a lot of illegal screens called here. Very common call, actually. In fact, a uh, game we had earlier today against uh, Botkins, the uh, first half, I think they called, what, four of them? The Plyman had a Jacob had a couple of them, yes, and they went on both teams, so it was tight. That particular situation was tightly called. Pass goes inside to Hunt. Nice move off the glass. Well, that was quick. She faked inside and finished with her left hand, but that's a nice move and a good finish for Morgan Hunt. Extra step taken there by Kareen Heitkamp. But you look at Tri-Village and three sophomores and two juniors in the starting lineup. Future looks pretty good, even though right now they're facing a very experienced and a very deep Fort Laramie team. Yeah, a lot. A lot of uh, that is true, Dave, and back in the early 10s, if you will, in 11 and 12, as there's another bucket by Hunt. Remember, Fort Laramie beat Tri-Village two years in a row to get to state in 10 and 11. That was a third time when Tri-Village played Fort Laramie in 12 that Tri-Village was able to beat Fort Laramie and get their first and only state appearance 
They lost in the semifinals to Berlin and Highland. Green Heitkamp shot no good. Downing with the rebound. Sagaster up court. She'll go to the right side. Loses the basketball. Putoff has her hands on it. It's going to be a jump ball. And possession arrow will favor Tri Village. So Patriots will maintain the basketball in front of their front of their bench as officials take a look. We're ready to go. Richards tosses it into Hunt. Hunt to the baseline. Double team there comes back out front and Tori Richards connects. Her 31st three point shot of the season. 42% shooter, her first points of the game. Short jump shot, no good by Heitkamp and the rebound comes down to Richards. Five and a half minutes to go. Hunt takes it inside. Foul will be on Rose as Clara Gephardt will get off the, will come off the Fort Laramie bench. So a good move by Hunt. Again, she's a scorer. She doesn't, I mean, she knows how to take the ball to the basket. She did exactly that, but boy, misses another free throw. Ava Schultz, the other Fort Laramie player coming into the lineup. Kind of a special night for the Schultz family. It is. Um, one of her bigger fans, she's got a bunch of them, but I'm sure one of her biggest ones is Grandma Pat Ruinkamp. Her 85th birthday today. So congratulations and happy birthday to Grandma Pat Ruinkamp, Ava's grandmother. And I'm sure she's excited to watch Ava play and her teammates. And Pat and Donna have been married also for 62 years. So. A lot of red skin memories there with Pat and Don and a special day for Grandma Pat at 85. And Ava goes down the lane, puts the shot up and will draw the foul and will go to the free throw line. And I know we mentioned it early, but Ava showed us really the basket in the first half against Minster as time ran down. Just one of those emotional lifts that teams get over the course of a season. Maybe it doesn't show up in the box score, but a big moment. Yeah, that was about a 10 or 12 footer at right at the buzzer as you see her draw the foul. And that was a huge bucket. It was neat to see the emotion and uh, that really sparked the Redskins and she continued to play well in the second half and ended up with six points in the game and five rebounds and you know didn't even play the whole game. So limited minutes performed very well. Shoulders with the made free throw lead at 53 to 28. Inside pass for Hunt, taken away there by Schultes. Rose will have the basketball. She'll handle it across the timeline, front of the Fort Laramie bench. Gasson back into the lineup. She'll get it over to Gephardt in the wing. Back out, Gasson. Schultes, Rose will have it. Redskins can afford to be patient with this big lead. Gephardt tries to feed Schultes on the baseline. Good hands by Megan Downing to stop that threat. He does stay with the Redskins. Schultes checks out. She did make one of two free throws in her short stint there. Rose, in front of the hoop, hits it, draws the foul. Well, that's taking contact and having enough strength to finish it. Muscle it up there and hope for the best. Take another look at it here as fouling out for Dry Village will be Morgan Hunt. But a good move by Dana Rose, the hoop and the harm. Hunt picks up her fifth. Carsey Sproul will come back into the lineup for the Patriots. Free throw no good. Fort Laramie comes up with a rebound. Back out front to Gasson. Over to Rose. In the corner to Gephardt. Back out front. Height camp over to Brandewe. Inside to Rose. She'll go inside with the bucket and it'll fall. That's a four point possession for Dana. She missed her free throw to get the offensive rebound. And uh, she gets the opportunity and picks. 22 the points on the night. What an effort. 57 and 28. The guy out of bounds and Tri Village will maintain the basketball. Fort Lormy T 
10 regional championships under their belt so far. This should be 11. Downing will score and she'll also go to the free throw line. Her first bucket of the half. She hasn't taken many shots. She took three field goals in the first quarter, made two of the, her three field goals, has not taken a shot since. So this time she able to muscle up, draw contact, and go to the line. She is three of four from the charity stripe today. With nine points, free throw. Bounces around and out. Rose with yet another rebound. Tipping it to herself. Good athletic play by Rose. High camp inside. That ball tipped away. Here comes Tri Village on the break. Sagerson out front. Shot from the right side by Richards. No good. Rebound for Lormy up court. Gephardt, easy bucket. Four points for the senior, just a point above her season average, but a good job running the court and getting in position to have that opportunity. Sagerson tries to go inside. It's going to be a foul on Gasson, I think. It is on Gasson. She picks up her fourth foul. Sagerster goes to the free throw line. 0 for 2 on the night again, 86% shooter. She's 91 of 105 coming into the game. Gets her first one there and her first points of the game. 2.59 to go. And Sagerster averaging 17.7 points picks up point number one. Yeah, just a sophomore, a rough night tonight, but she'll be back. Second free throw is good, and it's 59 to 32. Fort Laramie gets it inbounds. It's going to be a foul in the backcourt, and that's going to go on Sagister. Her fourth, and I believe Riley Height Camp. Free throw is coming up here to be her last time for the Redskins in one and one. Riley, a good free throw shooter as well. 11 of 13 on the season. 85% misses that one. Sproul with the rebound. Here comes Richards up court. She'll go to the right side. High camp on her. Back over to Sagaster. Down the lane goes Sagaster up. Shot will roll home. And Sagaster gets her first field goal of the night. 2.36 to go. Up court to High camp. There's a steal by. Sagaster. Sagaster tries to take it inside. There's going to be a foul. That's going to go against Corrine Heitkamp. Be her third, I believe. Fourth. No, oh, yeah, third. So Corrine Heitkamp, her third foul. And a chance here for Sagaster to get some confidence, if you will, get a little momentum to end her season here. A rough night but has come alive here late in this fourth quarter to get some points and knock down some free throws. Fort Laramie just always also seems to be bringing in fresh players. Yeah, there's not much let off. I mean, or let up, I should say. You bring in bodies and you don't have to hold your breath or try to work things around them. You can be confident with whoever you have on the court. Timeout Redskins. Fort Laramie takes the timeout. Fort Laramie 59. Tri Village 36 full timeout, so we will return right after this. For over 150 years, Cargill has been helping people be successful worldwide. Cargill has always done business responsibly and in a way that makes us proud. Whether it is educating farmers in India or providing bikes to students with perfect attendance right here at home, Cargill is helping people thrive. The Sydney plant is just one piece of a global company that provides employment for hundreds of thousands, food for the world, and support for thousands of businesses. Be a part of something great at Cargill.com. Thank you to the following sponsors, Brookside Laboratories, east of Chicago Pizza. Back to live action as Fort Laramie will toss it in. Jaden put off number 31 to get the basketball. She'll inbound it. Rose on the back door. Short 
shot off the glass, puts it in. She has 24 points for the night, and Fort Laramie now leads 61 to 36. Nice design, nice execution on the out of bounds play, and Rose Strong takes it up to the basket, kisses it off the glass. Downing in trouble, and it's going to go off Fort Laramie, so Tri Village will maintain it. Dana Rose averaging 11 points or so tonight, but for the season, when she comes in right now, she's got 24 and really a, a great effort by Rose. And she's done a lot, not only from the field, but also they're a great play defensively to secure the rebound. And you take a chance when you save it under your enemy's basket, but saw her teammate and another great play on defense. She hit a lot of free throws early on. She just did a lot of things offensively. It was a real key spark plug, if you will, for the Redskins offense, especially in the first half, to get them open with a big lead. Heitkamp with the basketball. Brandewee, Heitkamp will go on the baseline, back out, and Gasson will handle it as the Redskins just simply work the clock down with 1.15 to go in this one. Rose, back over to Heitkamp. Brandewee back to Rose as they just simply work the clock, Jeff. Yeah, it was really nothing magical about it. It's just ball control now. And see what's, I don't know if they, well, they're a little shot fly there by Heitkamp. Thought maybe they no hold good. on to it. Battle for the rebound is going to be a foul. They've got a host of substitutes coming in the game for Fort Laramie. Well, well deserved, and they're going to let the support players some minutes, seconds, I should say, come on to the court. And well deserved applause for the Fort Laramie Redskins. They've done a super job tonight. Should get a great ovation here. Fort Laramie players coming out of the lineup is number 32, a senior for the Patriots. Carsey Sproul will step to the line. And chance to get in the scorebook with a free throw opportunity here. And she'll connect. That puts a smile on some of the Tri-Village players as wholesale substitutes for both squads. With 46.6 seconds left and Fort Laramie moving on. The University of Dayton Arena is next. This will be their 11th regional or regional championship. Second free throw, no good. Gephardt with a rebound. Officials nice. time out yeah, to get one good. more substitute in. Well done. I like that when they do that and uh, give everyone the chance to get on the court. Paige Eilerman will toss it in for the Redskins. Allison Schmidtmeyer, number 42 with the basketball. Back out to Aubrey Baker. Also, number 23, Kara Meyer on the court. As the Redskins will run time off the clock here. Meyer with the basketball. Eilerman, 42, Allison Schmidtmeyer. Redskins just running their offense inside the Baker puts the short shot up no good rebound put up shot no good by Eilerman and or by Baker there on the last shot so for Larmy wins the regional championship of division four basketball here at Vandalia Butler and we'll move on to the state semifinal game gets the Winner of the Crestview Columbus Grove contest from the Northwest District and Region 14. That game being played at the same time as this one. So it looks like they may cut down the, the net here for the regional championship and trophy presentation coming up. Regional runner-up as the award presented to 
Carsey Sproul, the only senior on the Tri-Village squad, will hold the trophy for the Patriots. And now for the presentation of the Fort Laramie Redskins. And now we present the Fort Laramie Redskins with the Southwest 11th Regional Championship, as just said. And there's a host of seniors holding on to that hardware as see some great images of the Fort Laramie Redskins as they move to 27 and 1 on the season. And Fort Laramie will move on. They'll move over to cut the net down. We're going to take a break here, re come back for our recap and watch some of the, the net cutting here at Vandalia Butler Student Activity Center. So Fort Laramie, the big winner here. We will return here on NK Telco Sports right after this. Hey, Minster, this is Nate Henry with NK Telco, and we're here for you for your existing cable TV, internet, and phone service. Hey, Botkins, I'm Brett Gerstner with NK Telco, and we are here for you and to help you operate your business network. Hey, Maria Stein, I'm Ken with NK Telco, and we are here for you with Hometown Pride. Hi, Rishi, I'm Tim Metzger, and we are here for you for your installation of your telephone, cable TV, and internet. Contact NK Telco at 1-888-NK-TELCO. And Fort Laramie, the uh, Redskins. Now. Fort Laramie, as you can see, cutting down the net here in the regional championship game as they move along to the uh, state semifinals. Some nice shots of the different players cutting their nets down as number 10, Colleen Brandewey goes up. Number 42, Allison Schmidtmeyer. Up for Fort Laramie. Redskins, as we said, 27 and 1 on the season. And they will play. Thursday at 11 a.m. the University of Dayton Arena against the winner of the Crestview Columbus Grove contest played up at the Elida High School the regional held there. Ava Schultes. And now number 41 Aubrey Baker will go up the ladder. Always a special moment to cut the net down. And there you can take a good look at the Fort Laramie squad. Corrine Heitkamp goes up, and now number 11, Caitlin Gasson. Gets her snip of the net. Paige Eilerman. Clara Gephardt, number 32. Up the ladder. Kenzie Holscher. Throughout the tournament, one of the things that they've kind of 
eliminated except here for the regional championship contest. It's been the nut catting ceremony, which were. Maybe this one a little bit special being regional, but uh, the district tournaments we watched here today, it was really just a quick handshake and a plaque and maybe they gave him a net that uh, was never used. I don't, uh, I think they gave him a net and they just walked off the court. Jaden put off. Especially for Fort Laramie, very sweet after last year's ending to the season with the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. They get that chance to go back to the state tournament. Although this time in Dayton, it's a little bit closer drive, but uh, nothing wrong being at Dayton either. Dana Rose there, fine effort on her part tonight. And uh, I think they're waiting on Coach Siegel, who's being interviewed by the media right now, and one of the managers will go up. And Well, while we do that, I'll run through some of our individual scoring for Fort Lormie. Dana Rose ends the game with 24 points. Corinne Heitkamp, 15. Colleen Brandewey, 12. Claire Gephardt, 4. Kenzie Holscher, 3. Jaden Putoff, 2. And Ava Schultes with 1 for their total of 61. And Dana Rose. She might finish it. She's going to finish it. For Tri-Village, 10 points from Morgan Hunt. Morgan, Megan Downing with 9 to lead the... Five village coaches and Lucy Dana Rose with the net. Job well done, Fort Lummi Redskins. Okay, Fort Lummi the big winner. The nets are cut. The trip to state tournament, the University of Dayton Arena being prepared. We'll be back with our final recap right after this. Thank you to the following sponsors. Precision Strip, Carriage Works, Cy Schwederman, Minster Bank, Home and Interiors, New Knoxville Supply Company, Hokie Lumber. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Please support the following sponsors. Forever Fit, Rachel's Cakes, Speedway Lanes, Bomber Construction, Jewelry Barn, Tom and Jerry's, Western Ohio Mortgage. At Home and Interiors, our team loves to design beautiful yet cost-effective projects. From sleek and simple to elaborate and detailed, we customize to fit your tastes and budget with free interior design and color coordination. Visit our 5,000 square foot kitchen design center and bring your next project to life. Full custom kitchen and bath cabinets are built right here in New Bremen. Home and Interiors, your vision designed for your budget. Today's game is being brought to you by Grand Lake Health, Clopay Building Products, First National Bank, Keyhole Pizza, Winners Meats, Sydney Anglaise Audiology, NK Telco. Fort Laramie finishes cutting the nets to their 11th regional championship. Now let's take a look at the numbers here from the Vandalia Butler Student Activity Center where the Redskins move on to the state tournament, Jeff. Well, they did so by dominating a lot of the stat statistic categories. As you'll see, Tri-Village only 24 shots in the game. They hit on half of them, but just not enough volume. They were 12 of 24, just one of four from three-point line and finished 12 of 19 from the charity stripe. For Fort Lormie, 20 of 47, just under 50%, but they were five of 14 from three point range and 13 of 20 from the foul line. Rebounding margin belongs to Fort Lormie. They have 30 rebounds compared to 16 and had about a 50-50 split there and 14 offensive rebounds. They're able to capitalize on that, scoring eight points, a job well done there by the Redskins on the offensive glass. Turnovers again, Fort Lormie wins that battle. Just 11 turnovers against the Redskins, 22 versus Tri Village. So dominant in all phases of the game and 
today, tonight, I should say, really dominant in all positions on the court. They, were able, they had an answer for everything Tri-Village wanted to try to do, and, and the veteran group with some younger support players off the bench didn't miss a beat, and they really dominated tonight's regional championship game. And our player of the game tonight, brought to you by NK Telco. A senior led the way, and this senior was Dana Rose, at least tonight. She had a great game for the Redskins with 24 points and just played an overall performance that was an A+. Plus. Yes, it was. A little seven of nine from the field. She also went to the line and shot 11 free throws, making nine of them. And again, had defensive plays, rebounds, just really a complete game and won't say she won't say she had a bad game against Minster but uh, things that maybe go the way she wanted there on the scoreboard but tonight everything especially in the beginning first quarter two four six eight ten first quarter points that was key in Fort Lormie's 24 to 10 first quarter jump start and they never really looked back and just uh, applied pressure and, and played very well the rest of the game. But congratulations to Dana Rose, our NK Telco player of the game. And tonight's win moves the Fort Laramie on to the University of Dayton Arena and the state semifinal game. It will be Thursday at 11 a.m. They will play the winner of the Crestview Columbus Grove game, which is probably ending just about at the same time as this one. So Crestview or Columbus Grove from Region 14 will be Fort Laramie's opponent Thursday, 11 a.m. at the University of Dayton Arena. And K Telco Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays of high school basketball on NK Telco Channel 3 or in HD on Channel 503. Tonight's game will be replayed Saturday, March the 13th at 2 p.m. and Sunday, March 14th at 2 p.m. You can also watch more games on demand through YouTube, Facebook, and at nktelco.com backslash sports. Also follow WCSM AM 1350, 96.7 FM, and 100.3 Country and their internet exclusive games on wcsmradio.com all season. Your sports leader in Mercer and all Glaze counties. I'd like to thank our crew here tonight. Our director, Scott Robinson, as assistant director, Bryce Hamrick on the cameras tonight, Mark Fissel and Kurt Kuffner. I'm Dave Helmstetter, and alongside me tonight, Jeff Henschen, our final score. One more time, Fort Loramie moves on to the state semifinals. Our final score, Fort Loramie 61, Tri-Village 37.